Hi, David from Electric Teaching here, and I'd like to show you how to use Rolle's theorem, or Rolle's theorem, I'm not sure, I think he's French. Um, it's usually stated something to this effect, let f be a continuous on its closed interval from a to b, in other words, from one x to another within those boundaries and including those endpoints, um, let it be continuous and differentiable on an open interval in between them. So that means it's got to be smooth, totally continuous like this graph, and differentiable between the two points that we're looking at. Um, if f of a, that means the y-coordinate, is equal to f of b, in other words, a y-coordinate at x equal b, if they're equal, then there's got to be at least one number, one c value, which is going to be x, one x value, that they'll label as C in that open interval so that the derivative at that point equals zero. In other words, the slope equals zero. And if the slope equals zero, we're looking for a flat spot in maximum or a minimum, basically. Okay? So we're looking for that max or that min or that min. Um, that's what this is saying, that if we've turned, if we found two key points that are equal in the y-coordinates, that somewhere between them, the, the graph has turned, maybe between here and here, the graph has turned, and if you look up, it has, or even between this value and this value, that since they are equal, since this y and this y value is equivalent, for two different x's here on that interval, as long as we're continuous and differentiable in between, it must have turned and come back down. And if it turned, it found a flat spot. Maybe that one, that one, or the one above. Maybe the max or the min. Is it, I hope that gives you an idea of what we're trying to do with Rolle's theorem. So let's use this example. The graph I'm actually using as an example here is f of x is equal to x plus 1 and x minus 3 squared. Those two multiplied. Um, we're looking between negative 1 and 3. Algebraically, I can see that they make 0. They both make 0. So we must be talking about the x-intercept. So we're looking at these two y values. So when I apply Rolle's theorem, Rolle's theorem, I want to say that, okay, is this a smooth graph? Is there any domain issues? Is it totally continuous? Is there any differentiable issues? Looking at the graph, you can see it's smooth and continuous. In other words, it's going to be differentiable everywhere there. And we can take the derivative and see it's continuous everywhere because there's no domain issue, no dividing by zero, no square roots of negatives, anything weird. All right, so between here, we would first apply that f of negative 1 does equal f of 3, and as we stated, it's 0. So that's the first thing we would do. Next thing we would do is we'd go, okay, now that we know they're equal, it must have the graph must have gone up and turned down, or it came down and turned up through, those, through that y coordinate of y equals 0, through that y value of y equals 0. So we're going to take the derivative. I see that I could expand this one and do a power rule, but the reality is, is that I'm going to have to do some uh, multiplying and expanding somewhere. I might as well do it in maybe a product rule with a little bit of chain rule, especially when the chain rule's got something nice and simple on the inside where the derivative's one. So let's see, the derivative, if I do fg prime plus gf prime, so f, the first function, times the derivative 2x minus 3, okay, to the first, to the first, and then times the derivative of the inside, that's times a 1. I'll show it to you, but most of the time that's something I wouldn't do. And then plus the derivative, because it's times 1, of course, just want to double check that. And then it's g f prime. So I'm going to do x minus 3 quantity squared and the derivative of x plus 1 is 1. So again, there'd be a 1 right there. Um, now, a lot of students and a lot of teachers will tell you to expand this out, clean it up, and then ask my favorite question, what makes 0? Well, this thing is partially factored if you look carefully. I've got a common factor. I've got a common factor that I want you to see. I see an x minus 3 on this side 
times a 2 times a 1 times this x plus 1, but I, it's a factor. It's a multiplied factor. So I see an x minus 3 there, and there's two of them there. So instead of expanding this and spending forever, expanding through all that nonsense and then backing up to a factored form, jump on it. You've got an x minus 3 sitting there waiting to be factored out. That's going to leave the x plus 1, as I said, multiplier of times 2 as well, times 2 as well. That's not very clean. Let me get that a little bit better there. And then technically times a 1, but I'm going to ignore that. And then you factored out 1 of the x minus 3's, leaving 1 back behind. So now we have two multiplied items. I have an x minus 3 out front. Got an x minus 3 that I've just factored out. I should always take two seconds, double check. Did I distribute it? Did I factor it correctly? If I distribute it, would it look like the line above? It looks like it double checked, so I'm good there. Now, x minus 3 times what? Ooh, let's clean this up. That's a 2x plus 2, and we've got an x minus 3, a positive x minus 3. So now I can go x minus 3 times 3x, yep, 3x minus 1. That means I've got a, I've got a 0. I've got a, since this is the derivative, this is the slope generating function, as I like to say, the slope generating function. So I can double check where is the tangent line equal to zero. My favorite question is what makes zero? It's one of my favorite questions. I ask it all the time in class. This is my little acronym here. I use that all the time. So what makes zero? I got x equal three. I have to throw this one out. I'm looking for a derivative that is in between. Remember the theorem says in between. That's right on the edge. I cannot use that one. I mean, technically it's nice. I now know that it's one that um, is a min or possibly max, or it could be a saddle point, and that's the point here. That x equal three could have leveled off and then gone down, and I wouldn't really know that unless I'm looking at the graph or I've checked to see that there was a y value on the other side. So I need two y values that are equivalent to prove that that really was a min or a max. That could have been a saddle point. I do not know. Fact that the graph could have ended there. That could have been a non-differentiable point. So I want to emphasize that you don't just accept all the zeros that you find in the derivative. You got to use the one that is in between like this one. x equals 1 third. And if you look, that's about, ex well, that's exactly where it is. Algebra doesn't lie. Let's try another one. This is one of the ones from my textbook that always throws students off. If you say the function of 2x, function of cos, excuse me, the function is equal to cosine 2x on an interval from negative pi over 12 to pi over 6. Now I have graphed this one, but most of the time you wouldn't have a quick graphing trick that you want to do, and you want to try to do this without a calculator, a graphing calculator that is at least. And even with the calculations, all these numbers should be on the unit circle when it comes to double checking things. So what I want you to do is I want you to think, okay, cosine graph. Well, the cosine graph, we all know that's that, you know, jump rope looking thing going right through the y axis and the x axis in that sym symmetry type of way which reminds me that's an even function. And even functions then, even functions then, are gonna be symmetrical across the axes, across the y axes, since it's an even function. So I'm already suspicious of the negative pi over 12 and pi over six not being not be an actual equal. And if you would to plug and chug, negative pi over 12, negative pi over 12 into the function. So cosine of, and the quick calculation there, that's going to be negative pi over 6. Well, cosine at negative pi over 6 on the unit circle, think on the unit circle, a little scratch work, that's down pi over 6, that's the cosine. Oh, that's the root 3 over 2. I always draw a little picture and then I can see it easily. And then if you look at f of pi over 6, that's the one going up. And that's the cosine. That's the cosine of it, right? So that's the cosine. Oh, excuse me. At pi over 6, I'm going to be plugging and chugging pi over 3. 
So I got to be careful there. I got to finish my thought. I said f of 6, but that's cosine of times 2 cancels the 6, leaves a 3 pi over 3. So I got to think of exactly what is that answer. And that one is this triangle, the pi over 3 triangle, and that's the 1 half side. So I know that this answer is 1 half. So if I look at these two answers here, I'm going to get that these values are not equivalent. These values are not equivalent. Okay, cosine, that's the x coordinate at negative pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. And at pi over 6, it's 1 half. Um, the, that's not going to be equivalent, so therefore I cannot apply Rolle's theorem. I cannot apply Rolle's theorem. If it was equivalent, I would, like in this case, negative pi over 12, which we now know both on both positive and negative here, both positive and negative, they'll both be the root 3 over 2. So on this one, I can apply Rolle's theorem. I can apply Rolle's theorem. So this time, I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative and look for it. So if I go f uh, prime of, uh, of x, and that's going to be derivative of outside, as I like to teach my students when it comes to the chain rule, that's negative sine of whatever's on the inside. And as I write the inside last, I go, hey, derivative of the inside is a multiplier of 2. And I want to know when this flattens out and equals 0. I want to know when this flatten out, flattens out and equals 0. So let's see when the slope equals 0 is when this x is going to kick out sine 0 here because obviously 2 will never make 0 that's a constant so I'm really focused here so what x when is sine on the unit circle kicking out 0 oh right here at the start at 0 so at x equals 0 if you come back to the graph yep at x equals 0 you can see we definitely have a flat spot so that's the point in between on a differentiable curve that is continuous that does apply with, excuse me, with Rolle's theorem that does give us a max or a min. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope that these tricks have helped.